Hello everyone, welcome to English A Module 4, Consonants. We are done with vowel sounds. This time we are going to talk about the 24 consonant sounds in the English language. We are going to use this part of the IPA chart as our reference as we go through this lesson. But before we proceed, please take note, uh, please look at the IPA chart. The sounds that you see on the left of the chart are produced at the front of your mouth, like your p, f, and m, while the sounds that you see on the right of the chart are produced at the back part of your mouth, like g, j, and y. In our previous lesson, vowels are classified or grouped according to tongue height, tongue advancement or backness, and the roundedness of the lips. For consonants, they are classified according to voicing, the manner of articulation, and the place of articulation. So let's begin with voicing. Voicing refers to whether or not the vocal, vocal folds are vibrating during the production of a consonant sound. In terms of voicing, the consonant sounds are divided into two. We have the voiced consonants and the voiceless or unvoiced consonants. In the English language, there are 15 voiced consonants and they are B, D, J, G, V, V, Z, 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 M, N, N, L, R, W, Y. To determine if the sound is really voiced, try to place your hand or your fingers on your throat. So, ibutang ang kamot or ang mga tudlo sa babaw sa tutunlan or, or sa tutunlan dampi. And then, let us try to produce the TH sounds for think and this. Let us start with the TH sound for think. Th, th, think, think. Did you feel any vibration? Th, think. Wala. There's none. Now, this time, let us try the TH sound for this. Again, please place your hand or your fingers on your throat. Z, z, this. This. What about this time? Did you feel the vibration? Yes. So that's, uh, that is what it means when we speak of voiced vowel sounds. So the TH sound in this is produced with vibration in our vocal cords. Therefore, it is considered a voiced consonant sound. On the other hand, the TH in think has no vibration. Therefore, it is a voiceless or unvoiced consonant. Now, for our voiceless consonants, we have p, t, ch, k, f, th, s, sh, and h. The next classification for consonants is the manner of articulation. So this indicates the type of contact that is made between two articulators. So here we are talking about which organs come in contact with each other as you produce the consonant sound. So first, let us define what articulators are. So when we say articulators, these are movable organs involved in the production of speech sounds. So what are the articulators? 
So the diagram on your screen is used frequently in the study of phonetics. So it represents the human head seen from the side and it is displayed as though it has been cut in half. So you see there the different articulators at the left side. We have your hard palate, your alveolar ridge, lips, teeth, tongue, vellum, uvula, larynx, vocal folds, and glottis. So these articulators are involved in the production of speech sounds. On the right side, we have the different cavities. We have the nasal cavities, the oral cavities, and the oral cavity, and the pharyngeal cavity. So articulators move in different ways to change the size and the shape of the open part of the vocal tract and at the same time to produce all the sounds of English or any other language. So now let us go back to the manner of articulation. So there are 24 consonants and they are grouped into five according to the manner of articulation. So the first one is plosives. So these are sounds that cannot be sustained and have a popping quality. So plosives are formed due to a momentary occlusion, meaning there is a blocking of some part of the oral cavity. For example, the sound of letter P. P, P. When you produce the sound of letter P, what happens is your upper and your lower lip closes for a moment, then it is followed by a release of air. P. P. In the English language, we have a total of six plosives. We have P, B, T, D, K, and G. Next, we have fricatives. So these sounds are produced by squeezing air between a small gap as it leaves the body. So what happens is you could constrict your vocal tract or you could bring your mouth into position to block the passage of the air. But there is no complete closure. So the air moving through the mouth generates audible friction. So again, for fricatives, may ara siya partial closure. Makaagi dya po ng air pagwa sa aton bibig. And another key feature for fricatives is that there is audible friction. So in the English language, we have a total of nine fricatives. We have f, v, Z, 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 sh, z, and next we have affricates. So an affricate is a consonant sound that begins as a plosive and concludes with a fricative. So again. An affricate is a combination of a plosive and a fricative. For example, sa ch sound, it is a combination of the plosive t and the fricative sh. Next, for the affricate j, it is a combination of the plosive d and the fr fricative zh. So in the English language, we have two affricates. We have the ch and j. Next, we have nasals. So unlike other consonant sounds where the air passes through the mouth, in nasal sounds, the air is released through the nose. Thus, the name nasal. So there are three nasal sounds in the English language. 
we have m m and m next we have approximants so these are sounds that are produced by bringing one articulator in the vocal tract close to another articulator so my uh, contact naman sa dua ka articulators but this time another feature sang approximants is that there is no audible friction for example the sound of letter l l l to produce this sound what happens is the tip of your tongue or ang punta sa imo nga dila is brought closer to the back part of your upper teeth or your incisors. L, l. So my contact between your uh, sa likod sa imo nga teeth or your gum ridge and your tongue. The next classification for consonant sounds is the place of articulation. So this refers to the place in the vocal tract where the two articulators come together. So the in nagamit ang mga articulators. So we have a total of eight uh, groups for the place of articulation. We have bilabial, labiodental, dental, alveolar, postalveolar, palatal, and your velar and glottal. So let's begin with bilabial. So for bilabial, bi stands for two and labia for lips. So meaning two lips, your upper and your lower lips come together. In the English language, our uh, bilabial sounds are p, b, m, and w. Next, we have labiodental. So labia again for lip and dental for teeth. So the lip and your teeth come together. So in the English language, the labiodental sounds are and v. next we have dental so dental your tongue comes in contact with your teeth in the english language we have two dental sounds your voiced and your voiceless th your th and z next we have your alveolar sounds so this time the tongue tip moves towards the gum ridge just behind the upper incisors or your front teeth again for alveolar sounds your tongue tip comes in contact with your gum ridge just behind your upper incisors or your front teeth so in the English language, the alveolar sounds are t, d, s, z, n, and l. Next, we have post-alveolar. So this time, the tongue tip is close to the position just behind the alveolar ridge towards the back of the mouth so again post alveolar your tongue tip comes in contact with the alveolar ridge towards the back of the mouth so in the english language the post alveolar sounds are r sh zh ch and j Next, we have the palatal sound. So for palatal, the tongue moves toward the roof of the mouth or your palate. Again, your tongue comes in contact with your palate or the roof of the mouth. 
So in English language, we have one palatal sound, and that is y, y. Next, we have velar. So for velar sounds, the back of the tongue moves towards the soft palate or the velum. Again, sa velar sounds, your uh, tongue, the back of your tongue, comes in contact with your vellum. So in the English language, our velar sounds are k, g, and m. And the last one we have glottal. So the only glottal consonant in English is h, as in how. So in glottal sounds, actually there is no two articulators that come together, unlike uh, the previously mentioned sounds. So what happens here? Uh, what happens here is that the sound is simply the friction caused by the air expelled through the gap between your glottis. So as a summary, consonants are classified according to number one, voicing, number two, manner of articulation, and number three, place of articulation. For voicing, consonant sounds can either be voiced, meaning with vibration, or voiceless, meaning no vibration. For manner of articulation, they are grouped into five. We have plosives, fricatives, affricates, nasals, and approximants. And for the place of articulation, we have bilabial, labiodental, dental, alveolar, postalveolar, palatal, velar, and glottal sounds. Thank you.